This is a Hot Pie Original. The good news is we're in a place now where we can armchair quarterback. Will we get it right? No, but we have every right to armchair quarterback at this point. I don't know if we'll do it again. I don't know if you have the appetite to do it again. And it may be a one-off. This may be the one and only time we all look back and say, well, how did so-and-so handle that? So hand out some COVID response grades. And I don't mean scientifically. I don't want to do that thing where I pretend like every other talk show host to know exactly what to do. That's not the point. The point is your response, your grading system of those that have been in charge. So that's the way it works. Why this, why now, you would ask. The reason we have every right and responsibility to react and hand out grades on the COVID response is because the Anthony Fauci book, documentary, and emails are being released. Yeah, it's kind of the Fauci trifecta. So the Washington Post... And it is a long, I guess, interesting read. Again, that's why I'm throwing this out there for all of you. They have been going over 800, more than 800 pages of Anthony Fauci emails. They did a freedom of information request, got the emails. Some of them have been released already. Some of them we'll talk about today. We all know, though, what you really want to hear. We know the enticement. We know the chum in the water about anything Anthony Fauci related. If we're going to get to pull the curtain back on the last year and a half of Anthony Fauci, you know what you want to know. You know it. We all want to know the same thing. Did he rip his crazy old boss? The answer is, yeah, sort of. Um, Very little of it, of course, your interest has anything to do with COVID, and every bit of it has to do with the drama of the last year or so of D. Trump v. Anthony Fauci. You know that. So, a little bit of a spoiler, he doesn't rip him in the way that you think that he would. Now, there may be more coming out. I don't know. Maybe the book says more. I guess they're going to tease this. They're going to, you know, they're going to drop little nuggets every now and then about what the Anthony Fauci book, because they the publisher knows. You know, Anthony Fauci may be a nerdy little scientist, but the publisher wants to sell books and the publisher knows exactly what we're all thinking. And that is, does Fauci go off on his crazy old boss? I don't think anyone would blame the guy. Remember, when we last left poor Anthony, the lunatics, the MAGA hats wanted to kill him. So there'd be every reason for Anthony Fauci to go off. Spoiler, not really. He didn't say great things. I think he knows his old boss is a buffoon, but I don't think he went after him the way that you would expect. So let's do this. Since we are in a good enough place now, we are on the other side of the pandemic in practically every way. We are in this spot. Fauci is encouraging us to be in this spot where we hand out grades on the players of the past year. That's grades A through F. Let's do it now. Hmm. (laughs) Peppy game show. What game show is that? You know I love game shows. You know I've always wanted to host a game show. So you have to live vicariously through me in this moment. Any chance I can to act like a game show host, I'm going to do it. That's Gong Show, I believe. The greatest of the great. The best show ever created with cocaine. <sighs> Let's hand out some grades and you know who's going to get graded first. First up, Donald J. Trump. What? Start laughing. Go ahead. Just laugh. Do it. Get it out of the way. What COVID grade, A through F, do you give him? Okay, I'll go first. F. But I want to say this. I gave this about a minute and a half of thought. I'll say F for D. Trump with an asterisk. And I mean that. In slight defense of D. Trump. And I know there's not much defense. No normal human being has much defense for D. Trump during COVID. That said, I put an asterisk next to the F. 
because it mostly came out of nowhere. Or maybe it came from a lab or a squirrel or whatever. I don't know. But to be fair to D. Trump, I'm adding an asterisk next to my F. I'm not sure anybody would have had good answers from the very beginning. I'm not sure anybody. Now, nobody, nobody in their right mind would have handled news conferences and handled the entire thing publicly the way Donald Trump did. No, nobody would do it. That's why he's the circus act that he is. And I miss it. I miss the circus. But I will say, I don't think anybody in the moment when it hits you in the face in those early days, I don't know that anybody would have been ready to handle it well publicly. That's my asterisk. But yeah, he gets an F. Of course. It was crazy. I'm going to be nicer than you that I'm going to say F for substance. Yeah, F with an asterisk. And then I'm going to say F on communication. Arguably the dumbest two minutes of all time would have been the day of the disinfectant video into the lungs. So supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light. And I think you said that has him a check, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And hmm. I think you said you're going to test that too. Sounds interesting. Right. And then I see the disinfectant. Yeah. Where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection inside or, or <laughs> almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that so that you're going to have to use medical doctors. With. But it sounds, it sounds interesting to me. So we'll see, but the whole concept of the light, the way it kills it in one minute, that's, uh, that's pretty powerful. Trump asks people to go outside. That's dangerous. I hope people enjoy the sun. And if it has an impact, that's great. I'm just hearing this, not really for the first time. I mean, there's been a rumor that, you know, a very nice rumor that you go outside in the sun and you have heat and it does have an effect on other viruses. I would like you to speak to the medical doctors to see if there's any way that you can apply light and heat to cure. And I say, maybe you can, maybe you can't. I'm not a doctor. But I'm like a person that has a good, you know what. <laughs> hey, I'm here with John McClellan, I'm the creator and founder of ATX Hot Sauce. And when I say that you started this, maybe not screwing around in your kitchen. But maybe <laughs> maybe. Not, not, not that maybe. far removed from screwing around <laughs> in your kitchen. So talk about the, the creation, the process, uh, the dream that came out of the pandemic. It's from Austin, you know, from Texas. There's not a lot of hot sauces out there that are actually from here. There's a few, a few great ones too. But, you know, Frank's and Tabasco and some of these other ones, you know, I want something that's Texan like me. It's different. And I think that's what Texas is a little bit about. That's what Austin's about. So that flavor first without the vinegar and then going into the uh, the heat after that, but not a blow your head off heat. If you notice a lot of the hot sauces out there that you see are like da bomb or death's door, right? Yeah. You know, and they're just supposed to blow your head off when you do it, when you taste it. Well, that's not, that's not the kind of hot sauce that I'm making. I'm making a hot sauce for the everyday person, for the condiment for every single day. And that's why the flavor first heat second is so important that you get those flavors, the nuances, whatever food you, that you're, uh, that you're making. All right. Order a box now. It's ATX hot sauce.com ATX hot sauce.com. Jeff, it's not funny. It's the president of the United States. It's funny. It's, it was funny that day. Remember, remember when uh, the parent company of Lysol had to have that disclaimer because <laughs> the morons are <laughs> injecting it. Remember the the guy, the people doing the fish tank cleaner too. Remember those days? Wow, that was quite an idiot test, wasn't it? That that was the most <laughs> pathetic two minutes he had in his time as president. I that one's up there, and I know there's serious stuff. I get it. And this was serious stuff, but that was, all right, F, F, that's F for communication. That is A for comedy. That's F for communication. Huh? What? Yeah. Remember he was just randomly talking to people around the room. Yeah. Hey, Freddie, 
You, yeah, remember, what about disinfectant? Huh? What? <laughs> He's randomly pointing people out. Well, if you looked into that, I don't know, it could happen. Maybe. Light, huh? What? What's it? Bob. Is Bob here? Bob, you know anything about that light thing? <laughs> F. <clears throat> Next up, Stephen Pence, the vice president, or Richard Pence, whatever his name was. Dan Pence. You know that guy? Pence? Wow. Mike Pence. Mike Pence gets, I don't know about you, I've already had that on an F with an asterisk for Trump. I'm going to give Mike Pence an incomplete. Who knows? Mike Pence gets an incomplete on substance, and Mike Pence gets an incomplete on communications. That poor guy. I don't know what to make of Mike Pence. I don't know whether to admire him for being so stoic and being the, the pinata for Donald Trump. Or to say, are you a robot? If there's anybody that should have a drinking problem, and I don't think that he does, but if there's anybody that should, that leaves work every day and has the shakes, it's Mike Pence. That man should drink a lot. Think about his time. He would just stand there and smile and do that head nod thing. And then his boss sent his goons to kill him. And he's still backing him up. Mike Pence gets an incomplete. He was not, He had nothing to do. I don't know if he should have done anything. I don't know if he should have said anything. Who knows? From what I've read of the Fauci emails, Mike Pence never comes up. I'm not even sure Fauci knew who he was. Incomplete. Can't say that he handled it poorly. You just can say that he didn't handle it. He just did that thing where he stands in the back as his boss just mocks him. <laughs> then we get to Anthony Fauci. And so about these emails, um, it's an interesting read, I guess. I know, I know. Don't do this thing. Oh, he's a brilliant scientist. We get, We understand that. Okay, let's remember, as usual, we have to separate the nutcase crowd from normal people. And normal people appreciate that Anthony Fauci is a brilliant scientist. I, I, I get it. But Fauci's about to blow up because he has a book, a documentary, and the Post is has released emails, 800 pages of emails. They're doing a story about it. The thing about Fauci, and I, I'm going to be I, I'm going to be fairly critical, uh, probably because he was stuck in a place he didn't belong. But if Anthony Fauci wants to once out of the limelight and he wants away from the controversy, I've got to say writing a book on the heels of a documentary is no way to disappear there, Tony. It's not. I mean, I, it's been a rough go for the guy, even if he didn't have Donald Trump as his crazy boss. But you had Donald Trump as your crazy boss and you led the rest of us to believe that you really wanted to disappear and just say, I want to go about my life and I just want to do science and I, I don't want any part of this stuff. Nobody would blame Anthony Fauci for that. That said, you can't say I went on the limelight and I got a book. Let's talk. So I, I, I'm not going to offer up glowing praise to, to Anthony Fauci. Again, not all his fault because he's stuck in a bad place because the entire process was mismanaged, but understandably mismanaged. It needed it needed a communications expert, and with Trump around, there's no such thing. You can't. That person can't exist. Whatever the press secretary was doing, she was a basket case, too. So he's got this book. He's got the documentary. Um, and, you know, the emails have been released. And the one thing you take away from the story in the post of, from the emails is the guy's genuinely a, a nice, kind-hearted guy who's really trying hard and trying to figure it out. And he doesn't rip anybody the way that you would think he rips them. Now, maybe you see this differently. I, I, I don't know. What you really want to know is two things. What you really want to know is, one, the origin of the virus. What did he know? What did he not know? And then number two, you want to know if he rips his crazy old boss. 
That's what you want to know. That's the only real marketing strategy that's out there. That's why you would read the book. That's why I'll invite him on the show. That's why he'll be on every talk show you can think of for two primary reasons. One, the origin of the virus. Number two, come on, your boss is a crazy man. Say it, please. So here we go. It's, uh, let me get the $7 glasses. Washington Post today. 866 pages of Anthony Fauci's emails obtained by the Washington Post as part of a Freedom of Information Act request. The correspondence from March and April 2020 opens a window to Fauci's world during some of the most frantic days of the crisis when the longtime director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases was struggling to bring coherence to the Trump administration's chaotic response to the virus and President Donald Trump was seeking to minimize its severity. Yeah, that's a fairly decent summary. Uh, I think that's true. And I, and I think a lot of us would say, even with Trump, I mean, there is a level where you say it's so weird, so chaotic, so unexpected. You know, how could it have been managed better? Well, I don't think either one of them managed it publicly, publicly very well. I don't. I don't think either one of them had the skill set to manage it publicly Very well. There's not many people that would have had the ability to manage it publicly very well. Now, his seventh president, Anthony Fauci, is 80. That guy looks great to be 80. Considering what he's been through, considering the Trump goons want to kill him, considering his boss was a nut job, that guy looks amazing to be 80 years old. So many Republicans accuse him of playing a key role in Trump's loss in the November election. What? No. No. Not at all. Um, There's an obvious question here, and I know it's impossible to even think it through. Had Trump handled it differently? Let's say Donald Trump handled it and you gave him a C. Let's say Donald Trump embraced it. Let's say Donald Trump did the thing that we know he's not capable of doing, and it's, it's too late now. Um, had Trump said, you know, we got, we're going to find a way to get through this. We're trying to learn our way through this. It's awful. Let's just, ha- let's just pretend for a second that Trump embraced the severity of it and didn't dismiss it. Would he have been reelected? I don't know. I don't know. I know he wasn't capable of doing that, obviously. But what if what if the two of them had sort of the same message? We're trying to figure it out, trying to figure it out. We're gonna we're gonna do all we can to get you through this. Would he have been reelected? I mean, I, he would have had a better chance. Why am I even saying that? He's gonna be back in office, he says in August. So forget the whole thing. So Fauci, Fauci, Fauci. How did he handle this publicly? He it was not a good strategy. During daily televised briefings at the White House, Fauci emerged as an at times reluctant and polarizing media star to Trump supporters. He was a contrarian who seemed to undermine the president at every turn. That old, what is that narrative? What is that narrative? That's the lunatics who hate Fauci. How did he undercut him at every turn? The emails show that he was inundated with correspondence from colleagues, hospital administrators, foreign governments, and random strangers. Get this. The Post reports he would get more than 1,000 messages a day. He says at one point, writing to seek his advice, solicit help, or simply offer encouragement. And then it goes into great detail about how... He responded, and apparently he responds. I mean, this is a fascinating thing about the guy. Apparently he responds to every one of them, and he did. And he responds via email almost the way he talks. It's it's not very clear. I'll be honest. The guy talks in circles. He's not supposed to be a professional communicator. Therein lies the problem. But he does talk in circles, and his emails were just kind of a pat on the back. Remember his boss... His boss, in his own Trump-like way, would rip him pretty regularly. I 
really, uh, Dr. Fauci is a very nice man. But we let him do what he wants to do. He gets a lot of television. He loves being on television, and we let him do it. And sometimes he says things that are a little bit off, and they get built up, unfortunately. But he's a nice guy. I like him. But he's called a lot of bad calls. He said, don't wear a mask. And he said, don't ban China. They were bad calls. He admits that. And I don't hold that against him. If I did, I wouldn't have him. No, I think he's a nice guy. Huh? I don't want to. I don't want to hurt him. He's been there for... About 350 years. <laughs> 350 years. I miss that. I miss it. That kind of stupid, nonsensical conversation. I miss it. It's good for business. So he gets a thousand emails a day. Here's one. The medical director of the National Football League Players Association asked Fauci for a confidential briefing on how to safely start the season. Remember, they played. I told you in the beginning, when, there, when, when every day there was another debate about what do we do, what do we not do, we sit at home. I said they're going to play football. I don't care if there's dead bodies in the end zone. They were going to play. I told you. A documentary filmmaker working on a forthcoming Disney-backed biopic asked to ride along as Fauci drove to work. An advisor to Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates expressed concern about Fauci's health. A senior White House Republican told Fauci, quote, to keep being a science truth teller despite skepticism about the virus from other GOP lawmakers. I mean, what else is Fauci going to just tell? I mean, is that what we're going to get? We're going to get him. It's just going to be he's going to unload on everybody. I don't think so. I don't get that impression at all. I think. I don't know that this book is that interesting. No offense. He says, I was getting every single kind of question, mostly people who were a little bit confused about the mixed messages that were coming out of the White House and wanted to know what's the real scoop, Fauci says. I have a reputation that I respond to people when they ask for help, even if it takes a long time. It's time consuming, but I do respond. And then it goes on and on and on into the emails. April 14, a day when nearly 3,000 Americans would die of COVID-19, Fauci received an earnest list of questions from senior officials with the Office of the Surgeon General. You are the voice of reason for millions of concerned citizens, wrote the official. So, I mean, don't you really want to know the names? Because once the names, if Fauci starts listing the names, you know who's going to start talking. And he's going to get that list out again of people he hates. That's D. Trump. And the goons are going to react. Can the vi- Here are the questions. Can the virus be contracted from a corpse? Can someone who has taken hydroxychloroquine, remember that's fish tank stuff that D. Trump was selling, for years contract the virus? Are masks and gloves truly effective? Finally, what keeps you up at night regarding COVID-19? Then Fauci responded, is a, respiratory, a respiratory illness is what keeps me up. We are in that now, and that's what keeps me up at night and is the response, a major part of which is development of an effective vaccine and treatment for COVID-19, blah, blah, blah. Is it all that interesting? A little. Um, then you get this. Here's the chairman of the Walt Disney Company, Robert Iger, was immensely supportive of a documentary about Fauci that would feature footage discreetly shot as the doctor went about his pandemic duties. The film is set to be released this year. The NFL Players Association, Tom Mayer, the NFLPA's medical director, emailed Fauci. One of Fauci's top aides said on April 4, we stand up, we stand up a joint NFLPA NFL task force with a view towards if and when we might look forward to an NFL season when games are played. My request is that Dr. Fauci give a tele- telephone briefing to our group. On this difficult matter. So it goes on 800 pages of that. And nowhere in here other than he calls people crazy, the crazy people, which is code for D. Trump and the gang. Nowhere so far do you get the idea that he goes off and says, you know what? I have three glasses of wine and my boss is an effing lunatic. He didn't do it. Listen at jeffwardshow.com. 